Flight 10's launch attempt was scrubbed due to issues, which is a bit disappointing, though it should be back on track soon. Meanwhile, Blue Origin's new Shepard faces a more serious delay. And ahead of a major milestone, NASA is preparing to announce new astronauts and share updates on Artemis 2. Let's dive in on today's episode of Great SpaceX. I believe everyone was in a state of high readiness for the launch attempt on the afternoon of the 24th of August. This is completely understandable since we have been waiting nearly three months for this flight and because it carries such great importance for the future of Starship. At the beginning, everything seemed to proceed very smoothly. About an hour before liftoff, the GO command was announced for fuel loading and propellant began to flow into both stages. Spirits were high and anticipation grew as the countdown continued. However, things took an unexpected turn. About 35 and a half minutes before liftoff, the fueling process suddenly came to a stop. A hold command was issued, signaling that something was wrong. The countdown was suspended, and then about 17 minutes before liftoff, the situation escalated further when the abort command was called. Venting could be seen from the rocket and its systems as the loaded fuel was detanked. The attempt was officially over. So what exactly happened? On its official channel, SpaceX posted, standing down from today's 10th flight of Starship to allow time to troubleshoot an issue with ground systems. This short but telling statement made it clear that the problem did not originate from the rocket itself, but from the launch infrastructure. That left many wondering exactly which part of the system had caused the delay. Based on some observations and disclosures that circulated on X, the most likely culprit appears to be the Ship Quick Disconnect, or Ship QD for short. At the end of August 24th, crews could be seen lifting work platforms around this system making adjustments. It's important to note that the ship QD had not supported an official fueling activity in quite some time, even though it had been opened and closed many times during other operations. The attempt on the 24th may have exposed issues that had not been revealed in prior testing. There's also the possibility that the issue came from the booster QD, although this has not been confirmed. The BQD recently underwent modifications to accommodate the ship testing system. Tubing was directly connected through the BQD cover, and this may have introduced unexpected complications. Keep in mind that the ship testing system itself was disassembled and reassembled twice, which increased the chances for something to go wrong. This situation further highlights the urgent need for SpaceX to bring the Massey test site fully back into service, or to accelerate the development of an additional launch pad to provide backup in case of such issues. Another important detail is that there was no evidence of testing conducted with the BQD fueling system after the ship test stand was removed, nor were there combined tests between the booster and the launch system after the booster arrived at the pad. Without these checks, it would have been very difficult to detect problems before the countdown. The good news is that all available information suggests the vehicle itself is still in good condition. No issues have been reported with either the booster or the ship, so the hardware remains healthy and ready. The setback seems confined to ground support equipment, which means the problem should be resolvable relatively quickly. Nevertheless, this event underlines the importance of thorough preparation to avoid scrubs. While safety must always come first, limiting last-minute holds and aborts is also vital for building confidence. The next question on everyone's mind is obvious. When will the next launch attempt take place? Even Musk himself commented on the scrub, noting, there are a few goals, but the most important is launching. SpaceX initially withheld a new launch time, sparking speculation of delays. Soon after, the company confirmed Flight 10 is now targeting August 25th, within a one-hour window from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Central, a best-case scenario requiring only a one-day slip. Backup windows remain on the 28th and in September if needed. Beyond the schedule, this mission carries weight. For fans, it marks progress toward a fully reusable system. For SpaceX, it's vital to maintain momentum and industry leadership. For NASA, Starship's success is essential to Artemis and future missions to the Moon and Mars, especially amid competition with China. Though the scrub may feel disappointing, it underscores the complexity of pioneering work. Each delay teaches lessons that bring SpaceX closer to history. Stay patient, stay ready, and keep supporting the teams striving to drive this vision forward. 
NASA is also preparing for an exciting new chapter, as the HSC is set to announce its 2025 astronaut candidate class on September 22nd. At 12.30 p.m. Eastern, streamed live on NASA+, Plus, Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube, and X. Chosen from over 8,000 applicants, the recruits will undergo two years of intense training in spacecraft systems, robotics, survival, and science before becoming eligible for missions to the ISS, the Moon, or even Mars. This announcement comes as NASA expands its astronaut core to support Artemis, aiming for sustained lunar missions and eventual human exploration of Mars. The timing follows the retirement of veteran astronauts like Butch Wilmore, Shannon Walker, Jeanette Epps, and Kate Rubens, underscoring the need for a new generation to carry the torch. Alongside the reveal, NASA will host Artemis II briefings, a mission overview and science session on September 23rd, followed by a September 24th press conference with the Artemis II crew. Together, these events highlight both immediate progress and long-term vision, including the pivotal role of SpaceX's Starship Human Landing System. As September approaches, Houston will be the stage for updates, marking America's renewed push to the moon and ultimately to Mars, an event no spaceflight follower will want to miss. Next, let us turn our attention to an update on Blue Origin's new Shepard mission. In recent months, I've noticed a rather interesting pattern in the timing of major launches. Several Starship flights have taken place around the same period as Blue Origin's new Shepard missions. This time is no different. Blue Origin had originally planned to launch New Shepard NS-35 on August 23rd, which would have placed it just a day ahead of the highly anticipated Starship Flight 10. However, the plan did not go as expected. The vehicle was already on the launch pad, but the first attempt to launch NS-35 was delayed. Blue Origin announced the issue on X, stating, We are scrubbing today's NS-35 launch. The team encountered an issue related to the booster's avionics. New launch target forthcoming. While brief, this statement revealed both the seriousness of the situation and the uncertainty of when the mission might fly again. The delay itself carries significant consequences for New Shepard. One of the most immediate challenges is the timing. If Blue Origin launches after Starship, the mission will inevitably be overshadowed in terms of public attention and industry coverage. SpaceX's Starship captures headlines on a global scale, and any vehicle flying in its wake risks being overlooked, no matter how successful the mission may be. Equally concerning is the issue itself. The fact that the problem lies within the booster's avionics raises major concern. Major questions. Avionics are the nerve center of any launch vehicle, responsible for navigation, control, and critical decision-making during flight. If this system malfunctions, the consequences can be severe, ranging from the vehicle straying off course to complete mission failure or even destruction. While it's fortunate that the issue was detected before liftoff, it still results in lost time, additional expenses for repairs, and delays that complicate Blue Origin's momentum. This setback is especially important in the context of New Shepard's recent history. After suffering a failure in late 2022, the vehicle made its return to flight in December of 2023. Since then, Blue Origin has worked to ramp up operations aggressively. In fact, there have been 12 missions completed since that return, including flights carrying crew. The NS-35 mission was set to be the 13th, marking a symbolic continuation of progress. Unfortunately, the delay threatens to interrupt that momentum and create another period of uncertainty. Despite the challenges, the mission itself carries exciting significance. NS-35 is designed to carry the 200th payload beyond the Kármán line, the internationally recognized boundary of space. The flight is expected to deliver more than 40 scientific and research payloads, including 24 that are part of NASA's Tech Rise Student Challenge. Alongside these, experiments from students, educators, and university teams are also included. This reflects one of New Shepard's most compelling roles, fostering educational opportunities and expanding access to space-based research. In this way, the vehicle positions itself as a strong competitor in the suborbital market, where it often goes head-to-head -head with Virgin Galactic. There are also technical milestones to consider. Dave Limp of Blue Origin emphasized that this flight would use the company's dedicated payload capsule and its newest booster. This same combination had previously demonstrated the ability to simulate lunar gravity during February's NS-29 mission, highlighting its versatility. 
The capsule flying on NS-35, known as RSSHG Wells, is Blue Origin's first vehicle built specifically for payloads rather than human passengers. This will be its fifth flight and the 21st New Shepard cargo mission overall. As always, both the capsule and the booster are intended to be recovered. The booster will aim for a propulsive landing on a concrete pad near the launch site, while the capsule will descend under parachutes, allowing both to be reused. Looking ahead, the bigger question is not how many times New Shepard can fly, but whether Blue Origin can finally achieve orbital capability. The company's hope for orbit rests with New Glenn, its much larger rocket. New Glenn only achieved its maiden launch in January of this year, despite more than 25 years of development behind Blue Origin as a company. Progress remains slow, with the second mission currently set for no earlier than the 29th of September. These continued delays threaten Blue Origin standing in an increasingly competitive space industry where rivals like SpaceX, Rocket Lab, and others are advancing rapidly. For now, all eyes will remain on when NS-35 might actually launch and whether Blue Origin can demonstrate consistent, reliable operations. But in the broader race, suborbital flights alone will not be enough to secure a leadership position. Orbit is the ultimate proving ground, and the industry is watching closely to see if Blue Origin can finally make the leap. So, we will wait and see how Blue Origin moves forward with both New Shepard and New Glenn in the months ahead. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.